It's the Fugu Crisis episode. Get ready for a wild ride. It's probably worth a quick content warning that this episode includes a health scare where Homer is believed to be about to die. So if that's an uncomfortable topic for you, you might want to skip this video. Hi, I'm Torin, and welcome to Torin Loves the Simpsons. Today we're looking at Season 2, Episode 11, One Fish, Two Fish, Blowfish, Bluefish. An episode where Homer eats potentially poisoned fugu at a sushi restaurant and must confront his own mortality. So, you know, light and breezy subject material. Let's dive on in. As for the humor, I mean, what do you expect from such a super serious and heavy episode? Is it gonna also bring big laughs? This episode is plot-driven, it's not that funny. No, wait, no, it's the opposite of that, actually. This episode is f***ing hilarious. Sorry, every once in a while I'll get those two mixed up. Okay, so this episode is the funniest one we've seen so far. This episode feels the most like a fully-fledged Simpsons episode of the ones we've seen so far. I know this is not the first time I've said those things about an episode, but we're getting closer and closer to the show in its true form. In fact, I think you could make the case that we're there, that this is the show achieving its true form. I'm not sure I'd quite agree, but I think you could make the case. Lisa relentlessly pestering Homer is great. The beginning of a small running gag, where it's usually her and Bart ganging up on Homer. I'm not surprised to see Lisa as the one who developed the tactic. And it's not the only great Homer Lisa moment, because his alternative lyrics to When the Saints Go Marching In are fantastic. And the show is starting to discover how well these two characters can play off each other comedically, which is nice. This episode also has some really great quick punches. We're starting to see more of the kinds of humor that don't need to be built up with much of a setup, just a quick line or two. My favorite is when Homer asks the guy in jail with the harmonica what he's in for, and he replies, Atmosphere. This episode knows how to throw a curveball, and I'm super here for it. The episode is smart to end on that exact kind of joke, when Homer makes a grand proclamation that he'll always live life to its fullest, and then it cuts to him scarfing on pork rinds in front of the TV. This episode knows what kind of humor it's going for. It knows its strengths, and it uses them wisely. And I haven't even gotten to the best part, because it's time for another certified S-tier moment! So, the entire Homer Bart segment is great. From the beginning, when Bart assumes he's in trouble, through to him changing his mind over the advice of, it was like that when I got here. But the shaving scene is just golden. A truly classic moment in the history of the show. There's plenty more great stuff in this episode, and no duds or dull moments. I'm gonna be cautious and give this episode's humor an S-, minus, but there's totally a part of me that wants to call it a solid S. I don't think it quite stands up to the big dogs of later seasons, though, and I don't want to look back and find that a season 2 S doesn't mean the same thing as a season 6 S. Plus, while I think this episode is a little funnier than the preceding champion, two cars in every garage and three eyes on every fish, which itself got an S-, minus, I don't think the difference is enough to jump a tier. So, S- minus it is. And now for the plot. So, as I mentioned before, this is an episode where Homer has to face his own mortality. And just like in the previous episode, when we knew the family wasn't going to end up with the million dollars, here we know the show isn't going to kill off one of its main characters. But that doesn't stop the episode from going all in on it, because Homer and Marge don't know that there's a 0% chance of Homer dying. They, in fact, believe the opposite, that there's a 0% chance of Homer living, and they sell the fuck out of it. They literally show what Homer would do if he had only one day left to live, because he believes it truly is the last day of his life. They show how he says goodbye to his kids before sitting down to die. That hits. Like, wow. Even knowing how it ends, that makes me bawl my eyes out. And then, of course, we get the twist that he's actually alive and totally okay, and the aforementioned bit where he vows to live life to the fullest, and then pigs out on pork rinds in front of the TV. I feel like the show intended that ending to be a criticism of him, but hey man, he's not hurting anyone by pigging out and vegging out, so if that's how he wants to live his life, all power to him. As with humor, I think the show was smart to end things there from a plot perspective, too. There really isn't anywhere else to go from here. I mean, we don't need an explanation for how it turns out he survived, and I think trying to explain it would hurt more than help anyways. Plus, the whole thing was uncertain in the first place, as it never definitively determined that he did indeed ingest poison. It was just a strong suspicion. 
Apparently, the sushi apprentice whose work drew Master's comparison to that of a blind woodsman was still able to somehow fluke a successful fugu cut. Either that or it's Homer's incredible constitution, the very same trait that enabled his survival when he fell down Springfield Gorge, and then fell down Springfield Gorge. But there is a moment that has always bothered me. Homer gets pulled over for speeding, and sure, he's rude to the cops, and cops are indeed famous for abusing their power because all cops are bastards, but it seems like such a stretch that he'd get arrested for it. Homer's not doing anything that threatens the power structures that enable police supremacy. He's not a leftist protester or an innocent bystander or anything. Yes, nobody's ever safe from police abuses in the good old United States of America, and I'm certainly no expert on the specifics of police abuse, but it just seems unlikely that they'd go after Homer like this, and that bugs me. Nunning hits hard enough that it mostly gets pushed out of my mind, but it still hangs a little bit. A few cool things of note while we're talking about the plot. To voice the characters working at the sushi restaurant, the show hired actors of actual Japanese descent, which is cool, including George Takei as Akira. The show certainly hasn't always gotten issues of race quite right, which isn't news if you've ever heard of the problem with Apu, and getting it right here doesn't erase the mistakes they made elsewhere, but it is cool to see they got things right on this one when it comes to including people of non-white cultures being represented. Also, this is the first mention in the series of Homer's workstation being Sector 7G. I want to give a quick props to Alf Clausen, the show's music director and composer. I particularly love how he transitioned out of the lighthearted when the saints go over there back into the despondency of the plot, using a bar of reharmonized variation on the melody of when the saints go over there. That very much tickles the music nerd in me. It's super cool to be able to use a melody for a happy sound and then immediately turn that same melody back around into a sad sound. And now for the part we've all been waiting for. It's time to talk about Ned Flanders. Not for very long, he only has like five seconds of screen time in this episode, but this episode is notable for almost being the first to feature his catchphrase. When asked if Homer can borrow his camcorder, Ned replies, Okie dokel. It's no Oakley dokely to be sure, but as with many things about the show, we're getting closer to the gold. Also, one of the EMTs that drive Homer to the hospital looks remarkably like Ned. And speaking of the EMTs, look at this frame from this episode, and then look at this frame from season 5's Homer and Apu. I initially thought they just reused the animation, but no, they definitely redrew this clip for Homer and Apu. Look at the details on the ambulance. They made it extremely similar. Quite strange. Anyways, with all that said, it's time to rate this plot. This one is really fantastic and an easy S tier, but not immaculate enough for solid S. So we're going with S minus on this one. And now for the final rating. S minus for humor, S minus for plot. I wonder what the final could be. Oh wow, it's an S minus. What a surprise. I'm so shocked. Yeah, no, this one is a minor classic, and one that tends to fly under my radar, which is kind of a big part of why I make these videos. It's forcing me to go through even the episodes that don't immediately come to mind, and it's prompting me to look more critically and from different perspectives at, at the episodes. I highly recommend starting a YouTube channel to evaluate your favorite things in life. But anyways, yeah, no, the, watch this episode. It has the official Torin seal of watch this episode. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment, all that YouTube algorithm stuff. Up next, we have The Way We Was, so I will see you in that video.